Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own referral program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. I am your host, Arlen Robinson. And today we have a very special guest, Dan McGaw, who is an award-winning entrepreneur and speaker. He's also the founder and CEO of McGaw.io, an analytics and marketing technology consultancy. Coined as one of the original growth hackers, he has led the teams at kissmetrics.com, coldschool.com, utm.io, and more. And in 2015, Dan was selected to be a United States Ambassador of Entrepreneurship by the United States Department of State, where he had the privilege to advise the government, universities, and private corporations on how to build entrepreneur ecosystems. Welcome to the podcast, Dan. Hey, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, not a problem, man. I'm super excited. I, I guess our, our listeners and our, our viewers probably don't know, but we, we kind of go back several years. So we're both in the Atlanta, Orlando area and we did originally meet up, uh, you know, when you were doing um, some meetup groups and um, kind of getting our, the tech community here in uh, Orlando together. And uh, yeah, that's how we originally met. Yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun. It's been it's been some time since I've seen you in person. So great to see you again. Yeah, definitely. Likewise, likewise. Yeah, a lot of people don't really realize and I didn't really know it until I came to Orlando, how much of a tech community we have here in Orlando. You know, when people think of Orlando, they just think of Disney. That's it. But it does have a thriving and definitely still growing tech community, which is which is awesome. Yeah, for sure. We definitely have some cool companies here. Yeah, for sure. Well, today, you know, we're going to be talking uh, about something that you're you're starting to dig into these days, which is uh, personalization and and how that is related to SMS marketing. And because it is huge these days, as a lot of people know, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm steadily getting uh, marketing blurbs and, and, and posts um, via my, my cell phone, from different companies. And, you know, these days it's where it's at because I, I don't know too many people that don't have a smartphone, don't have the ability to get an SMS message. So it's definitely a great way to reach people. So we're going to dive deep into that. And you're going to let us know a little bit more about, you know, how you personalize it for people that, you know, you're doing it for. But before we do get into all that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and specifically how you did get into what you're doing today? Yeah. Wow. Big question there. Right. So, uh, I mean, I've been, I've been in the marketing technology and marketing an- analytics space for over 20 years. So I got my start in 1998, sending mass emails since before there was even mass email. Right. So at that time there wasn't tools like MailChimp and all the things around. So I've just been at this a really, really long time. Um, that being said, I mean, I got my start at four years old, learning how to code MS DOS just to be able to play games. Uh, I honestly, I learned computers out of a, a need just to want to be able to play Tetris and stuff like that on computers. So, uh, uh, really, that's how technology all started for me. So I've always been on a computer. I've always been fascinated by the internet. Um, mm-hmm. So that's always been um, a lot of fun for me. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I started my first company when I was 13 years old, uh, was fairly successful in that business, sold that company when I was 19. Um, so I've always just been an entrepreneur. Um, mm-hmm. I would have to say that I make an okay employee. Don't get me wrong, at Kiss Metrics, I crushed it and I had a lot of fun. But at the same mm-hmm. time, uh, I always love to poke the bear and uh, say, I don't like this and disagree with people. Some mm-hmm. companies like that, some companies don't. So uh, I've always made a better uh, CEO and founder than I maybe have as uh, the head of marketing. But Every company, luckily, that I've been the head of marketing, I, I've done some really uh, amazing metrics and crushed it. So it's been a lot of fun. Okay. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. I think we're, we're both kind of, I guess, uh, you could say veterans in this industry. I've been around for over 20 years doing, you know, running our business, OSI affiliate software and, and various aspects of that. And so uh, it's been quite a journey. Yeah. And I know you yeah. can testify to the fact that we've seen a lot of changes in the in technology these days. So um, it's, it's good to be able to keep abreast of everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, of course, at, at, at the top of the uh, recording here, we're going to be talking about SMS marketing and, and personalization. You know, as I mentioned, I alluded to, I think most people that are listening are familiar with being marketed to via SMS, getting the text messages from, you know, the various, maybe the retailers 
that they do business with or just any other establishment. Um, and it's really exploded. And um, why, I guess the initial question is really because we know it's done and it's done really kind of at mass these days, what are some kind of ways that if a business wants to really get into it, you know, how do they set themselves apart and, and really dig into personalizing these messages so people don't just, you know, glaze over them and just delete them? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think text messages is really, really hard. It's a different medium and people try to use text message in the same way that they maybe would use email. But yeah. when you think about it, like, do you check your text messages in the same exact way that you respond to, to emails? No, it's a, it's a completely different medium. It's treated entirely right. different. The way people respond to it is different. And I think that's a common problem we see people is they try to treat text just as if it was email. But right. with text, what you have to remember is that like it has nearly 100% open rate. Um, it's a channel which is meant to be for instant communication in many cases. Um, and people get really annoyed uh, when they get stupid texts that they don't need to be a part of. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of spam text going on out there. Um, right. So you really have to kind of focus on how am I delivering value to my customer? How am I making this a better customer experience compared to servicing myself? And if you're just the retailer or the vendor that's going to send out, hey, uh, here's 20% off your next order, right? Like at the end of the day, that that's delivering value for yourself. You're saying, hey, we're going to give you 20% off if you do something for us, which is buy, buy something. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the best way to deliver your customer value. So you really have to focus on, hey, how am I making this a channel at which I can have a two-way communication, I can collect information and as well as give information, but I have to first focus on delivering value to the customer. Um, and that's usually started in the way that you initially add somebody to your text message service. And I think a lot of people just add people to the text message service and just do it and then start spamming them. Um, so an easy way is like when you collect somebody's phone number, as an example, uh, if you're an e-commerce vendor and you collect their phone number, part of shipping, you should ask them, hey, would you like to get shipping updates um, from us over text message? And a lot of people are going to reply yes. And if you update them about their shipping, um, you're providing them value. Well, you've built some rapport, you've warmed them up, you provided them value. Um, you really have to think with text message, it's not sp spray and pray. You really have got to warm up that channel. You've really got to make sure that you're delivering value and then use it tactically in the future for other tasks. So uh, it's really, really important to deliver value, make it so it's a good channel where you can have good communication. All right, all right, good. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, um, I can definitely testify to the fact where a lot of companies that, that are doing this will kind of, pull people in rather quickly where I've gotten the messages where, you know, from different retailers where, you know, you, you opt in and then it's just an immediate blast where it's like they're, 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 they're throwing you a sale. They're telling you about uh, some new products and it, it can be a little off putting, I think um, it's yeah. a little bit aggressive. So I think you have to really, like you said, you gotta be, you do have to be strategic about your approach with it and, and figure out, I think timing also is a, is a, is a good thing to know with, regards to it as well, as far as when you deliver those messages. Yeah. And, you know, I think the technology has come so far compared to when it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I remember using a platform called Text Hub, which would only allow you to basically spray and pray. And, you know, I was in nightclub promotions for a long time and text message was our, our primary way of communicating with people. I mean, if okay. you're trying to get 20 year olds to come to the club, right? The best way to do it is via text, right? So, right, right. Um, I mean, I, I definitely have my, my history in text, but nowadays with technology, whether you're using Twilio or connecting Twilio to a product like Autopilot, I mean, Autopilot is what we use for marketing automation to communicate. They have a, a texting bot. So I can actually ask people questions. They can reply back and then I can change the journey of that texting. And there's other platforms out there like Emotive and all kinds of other stuff. But what you should be trying to do is, hey, you know, I want to send you text messages. What type of day would be best for me to send you messages? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, we want to be respectful of our relationship. We know text is a valuable or an important channel. Um, is one text a week okay? Is one text a month okay? Reply back with one if once one a week is good or two if once a month is okay. You have this unique opportunity with text to really have this two-way conversation. I mean, that's what text is used for. It's a two-way conversation and we have bots that enable that. So if you ask smart questions that you can get a good answer back from, um, yeah. you can really have an engaging conversation um, and you can really build that out. And to kind of put uh, proof to the pudding here, are you okay if I have a small text uh, test for your, your listeners to help them see what this actually looks like? Yeah, definitely, sure. 
So one of the things I, I speak at a lot of conferences is when you're at a conference, you don't get access to the thousands of people in the crowd. You don't get their email. You don't get a good way to talk to them, but you want to deliver value to all those people outside of the conversation and create a new line of communication. So I have a book called Build Cool Shit, right? It's the book on how to build the marketing tech stack. And I've got to figure out a way, how do I get people to go to my book without just saying, hey, go to bit.ly, build cool shit, right? That's not informative. That's not helpful. So we created a text bot system that has a two-way conversation with people to collect their information, collect all the details to ship them a free copy of the book. So for your listeners, and you're welcome to try this now if you want as well, if you pull out your phone and you go to messages and then you type in the number 415-915-9011, and I'll say that again, 415-915-9011, and then you text the word MarTech, so M-A-R-T-E-C-H to that number. You're going to meet our texting bot, which is going to help you get a free copy of my book. And you're going to have a bi-directional communication where it's going to say, hey, tell us your address and listen to what it tells you to do. And it saves that information. And then it actually automates the rest of your experience. It wasn't rocket science, right? Like mm-hmm. it was pretty straightforward to build. And I think companies need to take a much more pragmatic approach to this. Think about what the customer is expecting and create that two-way response because that's what text was built for. It wasn't yeah. built for spray and pray. So if we can change that direction, it's going to make it much more better for your, your performance in the future. And this mm-hmm. is the reason why our webinars have such high turnouts uh, mm-hmm. because we text people. We have a conversation with them over, the, uh, over text about, hey, are you still coming to the webinar? tomorrow yes or no we just want to make sure we know to send you the recording or not but we're always focused on delivering value uh Mm -hmm. and that's what's most important don't don't service just yourself because that's how you're going to get you're going to get stopped which is the international sign of all uh companies to turn off your phone number Um, so you you have to prevent getting that stop because once that happens you can Mm -hmm. never text them again Wow. Okay. Good to know. Really good to know. And you brought up a couple of really key points uh, as well. And also, thank you for sharing that, you know, the three, the free download for your book. We'll definitely have the number and um, that information in the show notes and on the transcript for sure. Um, I would encourage our listeners to to check it out. But yeah, you brought up some, some key points. The difference between SMS and text communication is like you said, it, it is, it's a conversation. A lot of times people are treating it more of like the email where email, like you said, is more of, you know, uh, uh, spray and pray, like you said, where you're just, you know, blasting out this list and you're just hoping people come through and they convert on your website or they do whatever you want them to do. So it's a, it's a basically, basically diff- big difference. You know, with email, you, you can engage, you can collect information, you can do the surveys, you know, where everybody is familiar with that. But the beauty of the texting is it's it's right there. Usually when people get something, if you're telling them to do something, they typically are going to do it right then and there. They'll be more responsive than with text messages for sure. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. It, it's definitely different. Um, you also mentioned something else that I hadn't really thought about and I haven't seen utilized too much. And it's asking people their preferences as far as receiving those messages because um, you know, you do have to be respectful, especially with text messages, since it's on someone's phone. People typically have it with them everywhere. They, they put it on their nightstand when they sleep. And, you know, not everybody puts on do not disturb at night. And so you, know, you don't want to blast somebody at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, with your text blast, you know, it's different than email. So you have to be respectful. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And I don't see a lot of businesses doing that. Yeah. You know, the best text message I got was at 2.37 in the morning about a week and a half ago from okay. Sticker Mule telling me that my my stickers had shipped. And I woke up wow. because I heard my phone vibrate. And I know right. that if somebody's texting me at 2.30 in the morning, something's important. And I right. leaned over and I checked my phone and I was like, are you serious right now? Like, you're going <laughs> right. to tell me my stickers have shipped at 2.30 in the morning? You yeah. couldn't have timed that out and had a delay to have it sent in the morning. Um, And that's where uh, you really, I mean, don't get me wrong. We all make mistakes. Things go wrong, but you'd Mm -hmm. be surprised. That's not the only time I've gotten stupid messages like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And text isn't only about sending out information, right? Um, A a common practice that we try to tell companies for loyalty programs. So let's just imagine uh, you're from, or or you live in Orlando. So have you ever seen those twisty treat ice cream places? They're like, they're Mm -hmm. shaped like an ice cream cone, super cool ice cream place in Florida. They crush it, right? Like there's dozens of locations now. Well, you know, we talked to them at one point about creating a loyalty program and they were struggling. Do we give cards? Do we do all these things? And I was like, just have them text the the word twisty treat 
to a number and then sign them up to your loyalty program. And anytime they come back, they just give you their phone number and they have access to that. That's the easiest way to leverage text messages. Have somebody text you a word like I did yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm. They started the conversation over text. We now know this person is comfortable with text messages because they reached out to us via text message, right? right. So you really do have to change the format uh, yeah. entirely uh, when thinking about text. And, and it's unfortunate that most companies just use the same old tactics. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, I think with the technology that's out there now, uh, I think it's going to become more and more easier over the next few years. And of course, mm -hmm. if people get into artificial intelligence and all that crazy gook, uh, it'll make it even easier for them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you're, you're right about having the customer do the initiate the engagement. It's a little bit different because if with that, when you're doing that, you know, they're comfortable with it. You know, they're yeah. you're telling them to text you that, you know, that particular phrase, their company name, whatever it is. And so, you know, they're starting it off and then you can just kind of go from there rather than, you know, getting their phone number and then you as a company initiating it. So, yeah, that um, makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, now since, um, you know, I we mentioned earlier when I was reading your intro, you're definitely a, 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 a you have a huge background in, in not only marketing, but the analytics side of it, which really, I think these days has to go hand in hand to it. And so I know what a lot of our listeners are wondering now is, all right, so, you know, let's say I do this, you know, I'm starting to ease my customers into it. I'm, you know, I'm setting up some different campaigns, however I'm doing it, you know, how do I know? you know, where to go once I started as far as, um, you know, what are the best ways to measure the success of this, you know, and how do they know what's really working? Are there particular tools that somebody should utilize to measure the analytics of this? Yeah. And, you know, it depends on the tool that you're going to use for texting in general. Uh, I mean, texting has an extremely high delivery rate. And when you do send a text message through mostly platforms, it will let you know if it bounced or if it was delivered. They can also sometimes let you know whether it was uh, replied with, with stop. Um, so that way you can see your unsubscribe. Uh, and a lot of these platforms will also allow you to know, like, what is your reply rate? So I think the reply rate, of course, if you're running a campaign where the user has to reply back to be able to get access to something, uh, you will be able to, to track that, which is super, super helpful. Um, another part that I think is really good, though, is that if you have a coupon or something that you're sending somebody, uh, most of the time you can attach UTM parameters to that link. So if you have a URL, attach UTM parameters to it. For those who might not know what a UTM is, it's just a little bit of code you add to the back of the URL. So that way you can see where the person clicked on the link. So UTM source would probably be something, whatever the tool you sent it from, maybe autopilot, medium would be SMS, uh, things like that campaign, summer savings, whatever. If you're not familiar with UTMs, go to UTM.io. Um, it's a UTM management product, which can really help you understand how to leverage UTMs. But if you have links in those, those text messages and they click on one of them, you're going to want a UTM on that, probably going to want to shorten the link. So that way, when they go to your website, Google Analytics or Amplitude, Mixpanel, whatever tool you're using, is able to track where that traffic came from. And then also, if there's any conversions and you have conversion tracking set up in Google Analytics, you can also track those conversions back to those campaign. Um, if you get really, really custom, so as an example, like what we would do whenever we send somebody those campaign links as well, like, so let's say that we were, let's say that I'm an e-commerce customer. One of my clients is a company called Hydro. They're the Peloton of rowing, right? So the really, really high-end rowers, let's say if they were sending an SMS campaign, if somebody was to click on that link, we would attach a unique identifier to that URL that would tell us who the user was, also where they came from. So when they click on that link from their mobile device and they go to the Hydro website, when that user hits the website, we would immediately know that, hey, this is John at AOL.com. John at AOL.com clicked from this SMS campaign. We would see that in the UTMs. So that way, when the user goes through the site and purchases something, it's all automatically attached to John's profile and amplitude and our CRM uh, and all connected. Um, those things aren't, um, I don't want to say that they're hard to set up. They're also not trivial sometimes. In many cases, it's just attaching a URL parameter of like question mark email equals whatever their email address is. So when they click on the link, your website identifies them. Um, there's definitely ways to do that. Um, okay. We're always focused on how do we do a one-to-one -one match, right? 100% mm -hmm. of the time. I mean, you're in the affiliate space, so you, you probably are used to having affiliate IDs so that way you can connect everything together. Um, right. So having UTM parameters, having that uh, cross a device identifier uh, is always going to be what really, really helps you. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so that those UTM parameters, that's something that 
within a mobile device and stuff can carry over so if they're clicking on the link within the message and they're going to you know let's say they have an iphone that their safari comes up that's going to carry over wherever they go from there yeah, hundred percent. And if and, and let's say that you have a mobile app, um, UTMs okay. will carry over to the app store as well. Um, okay. So you can definitely track UTMs through that. It just depends on how it gets loaded. But there's other technologies. If you have a mobile app, as an example, technologies like Branch um, or Apps Flyer, and they specialize in mobile uh, attribution. So like if you have a mobile app, I would say you want to go get a a provider. And a lot of those companies like Branch or even Braze, as an example, have a lot of that built in um, for the mobile app company and stuff like that. But when you think about a uh, text message to open up a website, UTMs, once they click on it, Safari will load it uh, and it will all work out of the box. And I know a lot of people are a little creeped out with uh, Apple iOS 14 has removed a lot of the intelligent tracking, um, mm. but that's, they're really saying to Google and Facebook and Twitter, uh, we're not going to let you make money anymore. I mean, it is less to do mm. with your company or privacy and it more has to do with dominating the market. And I, I wish that wasn't true. But the reason why everybody's against the cookie is to ultimately own more of the pie. Um, mm -hmm. And with the death of the cookie right now that's going on, unfortunately, the people who actually lose out are all the small businesses, all the medium-sized businesses that are dependent upon cookies. Google, Facebook, Apple, they have nothing to worry about. They've got billions of dollars to throw at the problem, and they all have their own solution. So um, UTMs luckily are, are staying around. Um, so you'll still be able to use that for SMS, email, all the other things. Okay, that is that is definitely good to know because, of course, in my space, men in the affiliate space, we <laughs> heard so much of, about this, the death of the cookie. And like you said, all of these platforms are doing things, you know, under the, the, the cover of protecting people's privacy. But, you know, obviously they, you know, they have ulterior motives and it's not going to affect them that much. But, you know, it, it's something that they're using to, I guess you could say, get on the side of the customer to say, oh, yeah, we're really, really concerned about your privacy, your data, which is important. But, you know, you got to look at, at whose expense is it, you know, them removing these things. Um, yeah. You know, as far as marketing is concerned, because, uh, you know, people that have listened to this podcast and other podcasts know that there are a, a million and one different marketing strategies going, you know, that you can implement for your business, your e-commerce business or any business rather. And so where do you see this whole SMS marketing going in the future? Because, you know, Technology is changing at, at, at light speed, you know, mobile devices, who knows how the next mobile device is going to be or what um, are going to be the methods of communication. But since you're kind of really heavily into it now, what do you see some things on the horizon with regards to SMS and, and how things are changing? Yeah, you know, honestly, with SMS, I think... Um the big, honestly, the biggest things that are changing in SMS right now and over the next couple of years is simply the ability to be able to kind of reply in line, to be able to like people's SMS. Um, yeah. SMS is not going to massively change over the next few years. I mean, Apple's been okay. able to make some changes with iMessage and things like that. So, I mean, I think those are some of the big evolutions that we've seen thus far. Um, yeah. People are trying to create new channels, whether that be through Messenger or WhatsApp. You're going to continue to see apps like WhatsApp and Telegram and social media channels that enable for this different type of communication, just because SMS isn't available everywhere the same way it's available here. Um, so like, you're definitely going to have a lot of these uh, different platforms, but I think you're going to continue to see WhatsApp grow. Um, SMS is going to continue to grow. Um, more and more people are using Telegram as well. Um, so you'll see more of these proprietary chat apps than anything. But in the, in the true uh, way of SMS, I don't think SMS itself as a technology is going to grow. I think the way that we are able to engage with folks over SMS with whether that be bots or artificial intelligence or being able to have better support, I think it's going to happen through chat, uh, excuse me, through SMS. And, and I'll use an example. I just um, did a around the country tour to go visit all of my team members where they're at. We can't get everybody all in one location because of COVID. So I just did a cross country tour to go see everybody. Um, and I was having an issue with one of the airlines that I was uh, flying on, uh, Alaska Air. And they said, hey, you can text us on their support. And I texted them and they got back 
back to me within two minutes. And that was a much more convenient support channel than getting on a phone, waiting for somebody I, better than email because I get instant response. So, you know, I think the way that companies leverage SMS is going to change in the fact of we can actually have a two-way conversation. Uh, there's a lot more integrations in it. I think Twilio, I mean, they're a juggernaut of a company. They just bought Segment for $3.2 billion. Um, I think the abilities that we have to communicate with our customers over text is going to change. But the true aspect of SMS and the fact of like the way that we use it, I don't think that's going to change for the consumer. I just think the way that okay. businesses can actually send text messages and respond to text messages is going to change a lot. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It, it makes sense because the, the base of it is, is, is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You're just communicating with your inner customer via their, their mobile device. But yeah, the innovations, yeah, you're right. It definitely going to see a lot more on the business side of things, you know, how are they engaging? Um, you know, what are their tools and integrations are they going to tie into that? And then, like you said, in your example of that last day air, you know, more and more companies are going to open up support channels with it. And that's, that's really good to know because it's a lot more efficient, you know, not only for the customer, but for them as well. So um, that's good to know. Well, let's get ready to wrap things up. I am always a huge advocate of, of learning from companies that do things well. You did mention some examples of you know, one company that you were working with here locally in Orlando, the um, Twisty um, Cone. Twisty Tree. Twisty, Twisty Tree. Twisty Tree. Twisty yeah, Tree. Yeah. <laughs> Twisty Tree. And they're doing some things well. You've got them going. What are some other examples of some companies that you either worked with or that you're knowledgeable about that have been really successful with SMS marketing? What are some unique things that they've done? Yeah, and I just want to make sure I we actually do not work with Twisty Treat. Uh, this is oh, a conversation okay, okay. that we had with uh, their leadership team a long time ago. It was just a, a friendly okay. conversation. Um, gotcha. Some companies that are doing really, really well uh, with text messages. You know, I, the only person I can really point to um, out of the blue would be Alaska Air. I was really impressed by uh, their ability to handle support over text messages. Uh, I thought that was really good. We don't see a lot of companies really using text bots as much as we think that they could. It's really not that hard. Um, but I think marketing technology um, and marketing an analytics uh, operations professionals are really hard to get your hands on. So it's hard for companies to do that. Um, I, <laughs> I don't want to say that we do text message pretty good, but I do think we definitely uh, do it uh, pretty well. We try to make sure that we have a text bot. We always are delivering value, but I, I can't really point my finger, unfortunately, at a lot of companies that are crushing it in text right now. I just, uh, I, I haven't experienced anybody really all that well. I definitely know that uh, Alaska Air would be the best one that I've experienced so far. Okay. Um, okay. And I think the airlines are probably some of the best at it um, just because they're, they're dealing with commuters all the time. So usually the airlines are the best, but I wish I had a better yeah. example. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. And then thank you for sharing. And I think you're right about the airlines. They've been doing it for quite a while because, yeah. you know, with the notification, that's why whenever you, you, you know, you purchase a ticket, they're always asking for your your cell phone they want to you know find out how you want to be communicated with especially you know when you're in an airport and you've got last minute changes on the, let's say a connecting flight um if you don't let's say have your email handy on your phone or you don't even have a laptop with you then and you know you're not disclosing for them to or allowing for them to call you then you're <laughs> you know you're kind of out of luck i mean you gotta listen look at the board so it's it's definitely really convenient for them to be able to utilize. And I see why they've been, have kind of, they jumped onto it early, uh, you know, yeah, to be more efficient sure. with, with their customer handling. Um, well, well uh, Dan, it's been awesome talking to you and it's definitely been great reconnecting. Um, I've definitely learned a lot about SMS. I, I see that it's definitely something that a lot of companies are, are adopting these days. And I think the, the key takeaway that I've learned is that you have to be smart about it. You've got to be timely about it and you got to think of it as a, uh, direct communication with your customer. It's not a, a spray and pray, as you mentioned. And so you have to think of it that way and be respectful of those customers a little bit differently than your email communications and correspondence. So it's uh, good to know. And so uh, definitely I learned a lot with that. And so lastly, before we let you go, I, I always like to switch gears here with the final closing fun fact question. If you don't mind sharing one closing fun fact that you think our audience would be interested to know about yourself. Oh, about me. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting, fun fact to know about me. Uh, I'm covered in tattoos, right? Like people don't ever <laughs> okay. notice that about me. I have two full sleeves. I have uh, uh -huh. my half of my right leg covered. I don't have anything wow. on my body, but that's always okay. a uh, 
a fun fact. And then another stupid fact, I should say stupid, but fun fact is that my grandfather was the uh, optical engineer on the Hubble Space Telescope. Oh, wow. um, so um, he is not the reason why the photos were blurry. Uh, that had more to do with the <laughs> mirrors and some other things. But gotcha, um, gotcha. Um, those, those would be two random fun facts that I could think of off the top of my head. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Yep, you've got tattoos. You got two sleeves, which are awesome, man. Yeah, I've seen them in person. And uh, I, I always get a kick when I see people with those sleeves. And I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm debating. I'm like, man, is that something I would eventually do? I've thought about tattoos, but I don't know. I just guess go I'm, do I'm, it. <laughs> yeah, just I guess got a small one. Yeah, and just kind of go. only hurt a little. <laughs> just a little, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll think about it, definitely. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. An interesting fact about your your grandfather who uh, contributed to the, the Hubble uh, telescope. That's some that's some good stuff, man. Well, great, um, Dan. Thanks for sharing that again. And, uh, you know, lastly, before we let you go, if any of our listeners want to reach out to you and pick your brain any more about SMS marketing or any any type of marketing technology, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, just go to LinkedIn and look for Dan McGaw. Uh, you'll be able to find me on there. Uh, I'm always very, very active on LinkedIn. So that's the best way to reach out to me really easily. Okay, that sounds good. Well, thank you for sharing that. And again, we will definitely have the information for people to access and uh, the the book that you're giving away via the texting into that number. We'll have that in the show notes. So we definitely encourage people to check that out. And thank you again, Dan, for joining us today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. I look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Likewise. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode of the e-commerce marketing podcast, be sure to rate review, subscribe, and share it with everyone, you know, 